Okay. And we are live. This is uh, Usra client meeting on Thursday, 25th of September. And we have the client team here, Tarek, Ahmed, and Ranim, ready to the development team. So we have some comments back from the client on the stories that we have put on our testing server. Uh, Tarek, do you want to go through those points yourself? Or should I read them and discuss? Um, I prefer him to start. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Motosam, can you show screen or Ranim will show screen? Can you share your screen, Ranim, or do you want me to do Can I do it, please? Can you guys see my user? Okay. Can you see my uh Yes. Okay, so we have those comments here. So, okay, so you had some comments on the orphans. Maybe the two major uh, stories we wanted to do. What are some? I think it's better to show everyone which stories we did. We actually, I opened them in my screen so we can see. And uh, you briefly describe that story and show how it works in in the website. And after that, we discuss the questions that uh, okay. the client has so we can so everyone can understand which stories we worked on and uh, how it works on real life okay so we have story about the organization this was uh, done by the there is nothing to show here for now because there is no screen or UI for modifying the organization. This will only appear in when we do the create the sponsor ID. But what is what is this story about? What it did? It's about creating the organization. So Ostra will have sister organizations that are with them. And for each organization they want to keep <coughs> some details. Uh, including the code and the name of the organization. And that code will be used as well in generating the Usra ID for the sponsor. Mm -hmm. So it's generator, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so this story is done. So the database contains the organizations, but we cannot show anything now because there's nothing on the view, on the user interface to show the organization. Except when we get to the point of generating the ID. And mm -hmm. that code is not uh, delivered yet. Mm -hmm. Finished, great, great, great. But not delivered to the test server yet. So, what the next one, the orphan details. You can look here, we have, we have created the model of the And we have an index view where we list all orphans. And then when we select one of those options, we can see that all of those things are in this space. And we have an edit option where we can edit details of the option. Save it back. Yeah. The details will be saved and then we can look at it again. And currently that we have a new option functionality. This will be removed when we have the importer in place. But for now, for testing purposes, I added this item in so that we can play around with the new options and editing them. But when we have the Excel uh, upload functionality completed, 
this will be removed. So that the only way they can add portions is through the Excel import. Mm -hmm. So this is the story. We have some more. Mm -hmm. Okay. So should we go into details of this story and the comment, or should I continue on the story? That no, no. Let's go further. Okay. So we also have the story of the orphan list. This is uh, uh, from the partner. Each partner can have uh, the user of Ustra will upload multiple uh, orphan lists for each partner. So we have we've implemented uh, upload orphan list button here. This button will only be active if the status of the partner is active. If it's anything other than active, this will be disabled or not available. And here they can click this link to get them to the list of all the orphan lists that are associated with this particular partner. And from the partner, you can upload the new list so they choose a file. Currently, it just does not do anything with the file just, uh, other than saving it and it is. It does not do any validation yet, not important. Mm -hmm. We only do validation on the content type and the file name, so now it has to be an Excel file, of a content type. This will allow to upload, if I try to upload file from example. Why it doesn't open uh, the dialog about choosing the file? No, it doesn't. It does file. Ah, it does, okay, I see, yeah. Thank it's you. just, uh, we cannot see it on your screen, I understand why. Because, oh. because you, yeah, okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, this is another functionality they set as well. So, this belongs to the add orphan list. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, wait, wait for a second. Uh, first of all, let's read the story description. Uh, yeah, before, before you show it so we can understand, like. Uh, save and then work on orphan list received from an author partner. I need to be able to create a new orphan list for a particular partner and upload the received Excel file. Uh huh. Okay. So about uploading file. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. But we do not have like functionality to. Well, that's, uh, that's the next story. I mean, uh -huh. we started in this from yet. We have the import orphans from orphan list. Uh -huh. Okay, so for now we just upload an Excel file, but we cannot yeah. uh, work with it, right? We just can upload it as, a, as an Excel. Okay. Yeah. When we have on well, the branches story, this is very similar to the organization where we have some data that needs to be saved for the database for the branches. However, we cannot see anything because we don't have any view that will manipulate this uh, branch details. It will only show when we deliver the create user, uh, create a ID for partner. We cannot see anything now. Uh, link a sponsor with an orphan. This is a story that Nikita has been working on. Not part of the testing server. First of all, read the story so we can understand what it is about. Okay, so this is the, as a sponsor manager so that I can control a sponsor as opposed to sponsor an orphan. I need to be able to establish the relationship, the sponsorship relationship between the sponsor and the orphan and have that reflected in the orphan and sponsor. So basically, this is the main functionality of the <coughs> um, linking sponsor and orphan. So there was the Ustra team sent me details about how they want this functionality to be done. Mm -hmm. On the implementation of this, there is a preliminary version that does not meet all of their requirements, but at least had the uh, background back end uh, stuff working, which is the uh, database and relationship linking and unlinking. So we will create new stories to make sure that this feature is implemented the exact same way that uh, Ustra means. 
And now, currently, this is not deployed on the testing server. It's deployed on another server by Nikita. And okay, show it. I think the Ultra team did not get a chance to test it. Yeah. This was just uh, very good. What are some, why, why can't we show it? Well, I, I say we can show it. Mm -hmm. I said Ostra team did not have a chance to check it out yet. We don't have comments from Ostra team on this one. We can show it in this meeting. We can sure go ahead and go to the process and get their comments. But anyway, let's show it in this meeting what we have. Do you like to go ahead and demo the Nikita, can you show? Sorry, I didn't hear. Okay, we want to show the uh, sponsorship. The, 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 yeah, the basic functionality is there. You can show it, or I can share my screen and show it. Maybe you do it. And yeah, yeah, share your screen. Okay. Can people see my screen? Yes, there is Tarek. What's happened with him? Oh. Can you see it now? I, I can see your screen, yes. But the Tarek is gone. Oh, I see we lost him. Yeah. Danny, do you know what Tarek is? Oh, he's back. Okay, so I can walk through this uh, functionality very quickly. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you're on the sponsors page, um, you can pick a sponsor, um, go to their view, and in here there is a button link to Orphan. Um, in, the in the near future, this button will be conditional on whether or not the sponsor is active. Um, Right now, it's, um, it's visible for everybody. When, when you click on Link to Orphan, um, what you see here is a brief summary of the sponsor, uh, as well as the additional comments uh, that were left um, about sponsor's preferences. And here you have a list of all the orphans that are eligible uh, to be sponsored. So these are the orphans who are active and who are currently not sponsored. Um, uh, so in a current implementation, there is a link here to establish the sponsorship. In a future implementation, you would actually go to the specific orphan page and create the relationship from there. So at the moment, I can click this link, sponsor this orphan, and this takes me back to the sponsor page, and now you can see that the sponsor has one sponsored orphan and the orphan detail is here. And to end the sponsorship, again, next to the orphan, there is a link. Um, you click on that, and the sponsorship link was successfully terminated. The orphan no longer shows up on the list. And so the, the, only f the, the main functionality that remains to be implemented still is the UI differences between uh, what the OSRA um, users have asked for, um, like I said, the, um, they want to be able to go to the, specific, to the particular orphans page and to create the link from there. But at the moment, you do it from this index view. Well, I think they are asking for both. They want this link, plus if you go in to get more details about this, this particular orphan. Okay, so th this stays here, and then there is... Uh, okay. Do another user story. That's it. For that user story, we have functionality to link. Um, yeah. For the moment, um, the story, the way it was defined initially, is basically finished. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one more thing they want, which is on the sponsor page. Instead of uh, we show a table. Now, this table, for example, has no sponsors, no, no orphans. Mm -hmm. So, a number of roads here based on the number of requested the orphans for this sponsor. Right. It will be empty or filled based on how many, how many orphans are sponsored by this uh, sponsor. And each row you can say link, or something like this. 
So that's another thing. And I believe there was a request, but we did not get the full details of that as well. Which is they want to do it the other way around from the orphan to say link process. But maybe that's for them. We will discuss with the client and see the best requirements and the mm -hmm. Okay, let's go for Okay. So. What else, and what else stories do we have to show? So we have the sponsor Ultra ID story. This is not uh, but also it was not delivered yet. But I think it was just the pull request was merged just this morning. I thought pull request was merged. Yes. Yes, it is merged. So this is where we, look, as a sponsor team member. So I can keep track of the sponsor I'm working with. I need to have a unique ID for the sponsors. And this ID is on, it's a seven digit ID. So, mm -hmm. let's go. Okay, so when we create a new sponsor, we should see it's this ID, right? Yes. But what I'm saying, can we try it? No, no, I'm saying this story was not delivered. It's not on the test server yet. Mm -hmm. so, so we create a new sponsor. And why it hasn't been delivered? Because it was just not this morning. I did not push this in animation. I believe. Is it a phenomenon? I think you are the one who merged it. This is that. I just thought it was merged because Craig said in Slack that like it should be merged. Yeah, it it, it is merged. It is. Okay. I think it was merged. If I'm not mistaken, this morning. My time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was uh, possibly even this afternoon. Yeah, just a few hours ago. It was morning mm -hmm. my time. I did not have a chance to push it to the test server yet. Oh, mm -hmm. but we can show it on another server or not? Uh, not, I mean, I don't have a ready server now, I can create them. I can just pull the changes and there is no problem. So we cannot show it, right? Uh, I prefer if we don't do this in this meeting, we we'll keep this for the next year like that. Okay. Because I think it needs as well some seed data to make it work. And other two more stories are just technical. One technical chore to update some replicate API. The other is a bug I found when I was creating the orphan list. So, I was thinking that. so the main thing that Extraction has seen on the test server is the orphan upload. Mutasem, I don't hear you. You, your voice is very uh, low. Is it okay now? Yes, much better. So yeah, I'm saying that the main stories that the client have seen and tested are the orphan details and the orphan list, and we've just shown them now the sponsorship. Mm -hmm. the version of the sponsorship story. They all, we already have some comments from them on the sponsor on the orphan list and the orphan details. We can go through those comments now. Yeah, sure. Time to do it and let's go just through the stories and accept or reject them that we have. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, this is a part of you need to tell us if these stories that we have delivered are Already accepted or reject for this, 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 this. Uh, Okay, so we have some comments here. They, oh, sorry. For the orphans, the, there was one comment on the date that if we want to choose a date, 
it will be uh, very difficult to go back in time because we have to do it one month, month at a time. So Can you can... click on the year, uh, choose the year? Uh, not with this date picker, no. Mm -hmm. just using the default picker of active admin. So this is one comment. Mm -hmm. so, uh, this uh, is for the date of birth, not the start date. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, but uh, for an example, it works on all. It's for any date. Yeah, but, but birth, date of birth is more important because most of the time date of birth is way back in the timeline. Mm -hmm. Not that date. Much mm -hmm. from two years ago. But can we write the date of birth uh, without calendar? So I can say, oh, I think it's not okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have workaround. <laughs> we have The second item is uh, you need to add validation to make sure that date of birth is not earlier than 22 years ago. Because the orphan, maximum orphan age should be 22, I think. So this is one more validation to add. So this is another story. Yeah. We should add, I don't believe this is accurate, because you're saying orphan stuff should not be on the But I was specifically was told earlier that on hold was a status for orphan. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm sorry for this note. I did not. Uh, yeah, just to make sure. That I did not have an I did not have an attention for it. Uh, Ranim, we discussed this with the Motosim when we met him face to face, and uh, stated that this uh, this status is 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 valid for some time. I will I will tell you later how it, how it could be. Contact number mandatory. This is also based on the Excel sheet I received, which has the specification of which fields are mandatory and which are optional. So mm -hmm. contact details are mandatory based on that sheet. If, if this needs to change, let us know. But for now, I have the sheet which is mandatory. Uh, is this fine for now? No. So I will not say anything great. If there is a change in the specification of the Excel file, please send it to us and we can add a story to address that. Original and current address. You're saying that they might be the same address, so you want to, you want to fill one and this little okay. I think this this is valid or I this relevant currently you are trying to create the orphan yourself when you are doing the you're going here and filling the details of the orphan. Yes, you are. You are filling this address, and then another address which might be the same address. But eventually, this security will go away when we start importing from the Excel file. And in the Excel file, we have all the fields available there, whether or not they are the same. Fields are there, and there is no point in asking or putting a, uh, an extra flag in the Excel file to say. Is the address is the current address the same as? Uh, Are we going to import uh, data only from Excel files? No manual inputs. For orphans, yes. Oh, really? Oh. Yes. Yeah. So, Tara, do you think, or Ranin, do you think this is still relevant to uh, Excel importer, or we can? Yes, for now. Tarek. This is this is this is uh, this is right, but it's not critical. So we can we can if you want we can postpone it for another. No no, we should discuss. If we only yeah. import data, when there is no point to do oh, that okay. at all. I got I got the point. Sorry. Uh, you are right. Maybe maybe we can, here we we go uh, with the manual. Uh, you are right. Yeah. 
No. Okay. So you say, okay, number six, I do not understand. You say, in case of non orphan. From what I understand, you're only working with orphans. So is there a case where you say, considering non orphans, or I don't get number six? <laughs> Is that uh, the children are not orphans? Is it right, Tal? Um, sometimes, sometimes we have uh, we have uh, handicapped uh, children, or something, or or some okay. cases like that, or fathers are are uh, handicapped. So we we also take care of these people. But uh, it's my fault actually because when I sent the the Excel sheet to the same, I think that this, this uh, field is, is which is the father death date of death. So uh, I don't know how can we manage this because so, not because I the... I think the date of death is should be mandatory. But also we have special cases that we care some, we take care of some children who are not uh, really orphans, but they don't have, uh, they don't have the uh, uh, the people who take care of them. Like if the father is handicapped or if he is uh, absent. Okay. In this case, you get an orphan list from the partners. Yeah. Stating that these are special cases, or how would you get the data for these orphans? In the same way, we get it as an Excel sheet. But they state that this this orphan is uh, this so, this children uh, this child is not an orphan. And you have you leave the date of death. Um, because now we are get the, we get it as an Excel sheet, so uh, we we we. So the mandatory fields are not mandatory in, 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 uh, actually because we can we can go go over them because it's manual manually uh, filled. But I know I don't know how in the program how can how can we how can we take care of that? Uh, I mean we need to discuss, but I think I mean either we put another field in the say in the Excel sheet to say that. Or not orphan. To other than that, we do other conditions. Can, can we make that? Or we make it. We make some of the mandatory fees optional for these kind of cases. Can't we make? Uh, why I don't know. Choose one date which will be like for uh, zero date for us, and choose all the date, fill all the date into that Excel. So we will be like I don't know. 1900, I don't know, or something like that, you know. Actually, I don't prefer this because maybe when, when when they have this, when they have a case that the date of death is not uh, verified, so they, they have a workaround. So that the mandatory field actually is not mandatory. Which it, 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 it will become not mandatory. Okay, so well, I, we just need to yeah, switch off mandatory. I, I prefer I prefer to to indicate uh, if, is, if this child is not orphan that we we have a a, a mark or a check mark checkbox or something like that. I don't know how can we solve it. We can have another Boolean field like we have mother alive yes or no. We have for example uh, uh, goes to school yes or no. We have Boolean values, so we can add one more. Child is orphan, yes or no. And based on if it is yes, then some of the fields will be mandatory. If it is no, then most fields will be optional. Okay. But but the the issue here is that when we get the data from the Excel file, if it's if it's missing the father's date of death, um, how can we tell whether it's an omission, uh, and the father's date of death should be there, or this child is not an orphan? No, but this is what I'm saying. We add a field in the Excel to say in the Excel. Okay. That is awesome. And they have to fill it properly. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
is that an easy thing to do from your side to tell the other partners that this is a new Excel format? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, so maybe this one and maybe another kind of validations as well. We can just make sure that we go through all the different cases and the new Excel file format. And then we, after we confirm it, we share it with the team here and make sure. Because I think this also, other things, if you remember from me, the um, orphan card will have a indication whether the father is deaf dead or the mother is dead, this will, in, will, we need to think about exactly what is the ramification of all these changes. We can do this after the meeting or during the next uh, example and finalize the Excel and, and share it with anyone. Sorry, I'm late. Hi, Craig. Hi, Craig. We still have time to talk with you here. Okay, next. Seven. Uh, I think also this is not required because you will not be adding orphan from the user interface. Only through Excel functionality. Okay. Back in the orphan list, you're saying when viewing list is the Usanam presented the partner ID. Yes, so, so okay. So on the partners, we go to the yeah. list. We have a sequence number here. This has nothing to do with the partner or the region or anything. This is sequential ID for the orphan list. All orphan list yeah. will have an ID, and this is sequential across all partners. Is that okay with you or? You need something else. Because I remember when I asked earlier about the ID of, of, of orphan list, you said it doesn't matter. We don't need them to be linked, for example, to the part ID or programs. We just have a sequence of uh, integers with a certain number of digits. Is this OK? For me, yes. OK, so this is not, does not require anything. Uh, you are saying here orphan count automatically viewed. Okay, orphan count is not implemented yet. Now it's set all to zero. It will be implemented when we have an uh, importer. Because at that time we will start reading the Excel and see how many records we have. So this will be later. Only for uh, the interface. For how to view the menu. Uh, I did not see you. So uh, when I um, view the orphan list, then I cannot go back to uh, to another page, only to partners. This is number three. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. So you are. Okay. What you say that on this page we lose track of all those because yeah. it was, yeah. the way this is implemented. This is a, this orphan list belongs to a part. The nested. Okay. So you need to be able to go back to the main page. I think so. We, we, you still have those breadcrumbs here. We can go to partners again. Yeah, but, but I can go to another page, like this counter or open So you're saying you, you don't have to open. Mm -hmm. But it's really strange why this top menu is disappearing. Because this is a nested resource, or yeah, the the lists themselves are not a top level resource like partner or sponsor. They belong to a partner, so that's the way active admin works with those resources. We we should be able to override that, I assume, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we have other story. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh, so we need to have a, like a default menu for all, and we should always show it based on the, I'm assuming also based on the role, this will change later, because you will have some roles that have access to some menu items. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I can add 
uh, story to make sure that this is captured. <laughs> Uh, first, this is number one date of birth. Do you want a story for this, or the work around we presented is enough for now? Uh, name? Sorry, I didn't hear you. For uh, just to confirm now, I just want to make sure that we agree on which of those comments require a new story and which are okay with you. So, the date of birth. You don't want to go clicking back one month at a time. So there is a workaround where you can have, uh, you can write actual data. Yes. It's for other thing that is a problem. It's not OK, so we don't need to add a story. Uh, this is definitely we need to add uh, a validation. So I'll add this. Uh, yeah, and four is cancelled. This is fine. Number four is fine. Number five. Number six. We will wait from your side for an updated Excel sheet, and we can discuss this. Maybe me and you internally to finalize an Excel sheet and then we communicate to the team. So there is no story yet. But when you get me a new Excel sheet confirmed, we can add stories to add the validations and additional fields. Mm -hmm. Number seven is fine as well. Mm -hmm. uh, orphan list. We will add one story for the menu. Mm -hmm. and that's it. So basically, we will create new two new stories for this. Okay. And wait for your feedback on the Excel file format to add to see if you need to add more. Now the question is, are these two stories critical for phase zero or are they not and they will for phase one? The menu navigation and the validation on the date of birth not to be less than 22 years. Um, it can't be most more to phase one. Mm -hmm. Both of them? Okay. Um, I, I, I think I think the point number two, uh, prefer, I prefer to, to be in phase zero. Uh, date validation. Yeah, the, the validation, date, the date of validation. Okay. And the menu can be in phase one. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, uh, so let's discuss about accepting or rejecting stories that we've... Uh, orphan details. This story is about making sure the orphan details are stored in the database, and if you edit them, they will be And the view, where you see the index, how you see the list of orphans, and how you see the details of each orphan. From your point of view, is this accepted or not? Yes, yeah, accepted. Oh, okay. It is the most uh, rewarding moment <laughs> in, in our sprint. Yeah. Okay. Now we have link sponsorship with the other. Oh, this isn't ready yet, Morris. Not delivered. Yet. So basically, organization and branch. And unfortunately, you were not able to see the details of those until yeah. I delivered the sponsor ID story. So I think that's the most we can get from you guys. If I do, I mean, once I do the sponsor ID on the test server, I let you know. This might be today or early tomorrow. I let you know and. Uh, Pavel, is it okay to accept stories in the period between the two meetings, or we have to do it in the client? No, no, you can do that uh, with client alone. It's not a problem. Okay, so I'll I'll keep communicating with the Osra team once I deliver this, and maybe other uh, stories as well. If I finish my uh, uh, on the Osra uh, on the orphan list. 
as well. So these these things I'll take care of and then communicate in the next two weeks with the Oslo team. If anything gets accepted in the meantime, I will mark it as, as such. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's discuss the priority of the stories in the backlog for the next sprint because we need to decide which stories we should take and we need to understand how many stories still left for phase zero so we can uh, make it into production. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so should I go over all the stories that we want to take? I mean, we already have the backlog for the next one, two, three sprint. But maybe it's not for phase zero, I don't know. Uh, so, okay, so. Uh, okay, maybe if I quickly you can tell me. Remember last time when we added the few uh, stories, we did not get uh, prioritization of those. So we can just quickly tell me. For example, orphan priority, is this phase zero or phase one? Remember, no. priority, normal priority. Mm. It's phase zero. Zero, okay. Yeah. Uh, Ustra, Excuse me. Can, can I or say something me. quickly? Sure. Please, please. Can I interrupt for a second? Sure. Um, I, I just wanted to, uh, to to say the what we talked about um, in one of our scrums during the past week is that um, at least from our point of view it would be the most advantageous to get the application into production as quickly as possible because then the client will be working with it and they will have a much better feeling for what works and what doesn't and what is truly a priority right now versus what can wait. So when we start prioritizing stories, um, you know, maybe we can keep this in mind, basically, that the sooner the application goes into production, I think the better experience it will be for everybody. Definitely, it is true. I think, so I think the Ustra team also, they, they are also keen to get it as soon as possible. So whenever there's something that's not high priority, they can leave it for later phases, I believe. Yeah. Oh. Okay, let, let, let's go far. Yeah. So, uh, this, this story is about uh, capturing how many orphans does this sponsor need or request, for example. So you register a new sponsor, they will say how many sponsor, how many orphans they are looking for. Yeah. yeah. And this, this is for zero also. Do we have it in Excel? Uh, no, no, this is this is sponsor. So a sponsor is created by the user, not by us. Ah, uh -huh. we, we were okay. talking about... I want to understand how we work now. We have Excel file with orphans. Do okay. we have Excel files with sponsors? Or? No, no, no. Only orphans will have Excel files. Yes, but I mean, in, in now we are working, we're using that sponsor request regarding how many orphans we want to sponsor. This is something new we have to add. This is a new story that we have to implement for them. Uh, request fulfilled. Remember, Tarot, we have this field, yes, true or false, request fulfilled. Yes. Yeah. Okay, zero. Uh, actually, it's, it's linked to the, to the previous point, so also zero. Oh. Uh, now, start date validation for sponsors should allow first of next month instead of only past. This is a zero of his one. So, no future dates up to the beginning to the next month. Sponsor start date validation to allow future dates up to the user. <laughs> Remember, originally we had to uh, make sure that it is not in the future. We said it might be in the future up to the first day of up to uh, sponsor. Hey, when you finish the month, January, January, when you finish the month, 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 January, when you fin
انت صار بدك تخلق تربطه بعدين تطلع فانه هذا الوقت انت بدك تسوي لاول عشره للدخل بعدين تربطه بعدين تطلع اذا اجاك نص شباب فيك تدخل بعدين تبلش بعشره طيب يعني بتكتب باور او بتدخل بعدين ما انت اللي هو ما دخل تحويل فيه انا مشان ما انكتر عليهم بالزيرو اخر شيء قائمة التحويل بدها تطلع من البرنامج المفروض اي طبعا برنامج بس فيك تقول انه هذا ما مال مربوط لانه هو فعليا ما بيكون مربوط عرفت؟ حتى ما فيك دخله وطلبه لا ما فيك تطلع عمليه عشر شهور بدك تستنى الاول او بتطلع عمليه حتى بتطلع هي هلا ما تطلع اصلا مثل ما قلت لي بعد فتره فمشان هيك على الاقل بدك تروح وتعرف اي شيء بدك تروح اي مشان ما تنتقل عليهم في الزيرو لانه هو كان بيحكي انه بلشوا بعدين تشوفوا شو في اوكي وي كان وي كان بوت ات فور فيز 1 country drop down list when we create a part uh, sponsor we need to add a country this country now is free text yeah I, I prefer to be in phase zero y to, to make our data in unique type mm -hmm. okay uh, said sponsor and partner cannot be under revision I think it's only active in active mm -hmm. so we need to modify this mm -hmm. this Uh, these are small remarks. Can can we maybe maybe it's very small remarks. Do we have do do we have to to categorize them be, between zero and one? Uh, no, just quickly tell me. It's very small remark. Small. Yeah. You can just keep it for phase zero. As, as I assume. Okay. Uh, this is very critical as well. I think because. This this is actually already uh, it's become a part of my story. Notice on what I'm working on right now. Yes. So it's yeah it's it's been implemented in fact already. Uh, okay. Now this is something we remember originally we implemented organizations to have three and contact details. So now we just want to keep code and name. So we have to remove the remaining uh, values. But um, code and name already there in organizations. So having additional details, especially that we don't change any of the data for now, I think this can be delayed. Maybe you'll not see my point until you actually see the partner of the ID generation. Maybe you can get it after this one. So what is supposed to do to move it to phase one or to what? I, I'm suggesting to move it to phase one. Yeah. I mean, to, just to convince them. I don't know if they agree or if they. I need to convince them. I need to show them the sponsor of ID working first. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll come back to this. Later. Okay. Uh, disable new open action. Okay, this is when this is when I do the import. I need to disable the new button, new option. You have to do anything, you know. Uh, okay, this one did not classify it. Yet. This is a comment from the last meeting where you said the the order of the fields is different when you new and when you edit. So this is, can be in phase one. It seems like. But you should you shouldn't click more phase one or not because we have a priority of them uh, on top and uh, uh, down of backlog. So all of it, yeah, just move it there and that's it. Okay, so we do not have more priority story, right? Uh, I try to make them, I try to most prioritize everything here, but mm -hmm. again, when it goes down to the, like, after 10 of them, things are not very clear. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So what we have now, uh, it seems that we we can finish phase zero not in the next sprint but in two next sprints, right? It seems like like vague idea. Is it okay? You are basing this on our current philosophy. Yes, yes. I uh, if even if we finish all stories that we choose, except of import orphans from an orphan list, then for next sprint we can choose like ten points, and we already have nine in the backlog. So this will be like the next sprint, and we still have some tasks in icebox. Uh, maybe not with big tasks, but anyway, these stories will be for the fourth sprint. And in this case, we can deliver a product to server in one month after today. Is it okay for a client, or can or should we, I don't know, reprioritize it so we can finish it in the next sprint? And uh, yeah. What do you think, Tara? One month is okay. Excellent. Okay. Okay. It's just it's just it's just forecast. <laughs> it's not a, like a commitment. It's forecast what we see on our based on our pace, but but at least we have a timeline. Okay. 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 Any other points? Yeah, you can. You can like uh, we on the on Monday we will have on Tuesday we will have planning meeting. Maybe you want to say something. What should you? What what do you want to see in the next sprint? Some words for us. Encouragement. Yeah. Uh, maybe we just need to explain to them how it works. We have on Tuesdays, other week, on Tuesday we start a new scrum, a two-week scrum. So, and so we have our planning meeting for the next scrum starting next Tuesday. So, in that meeting we do the plan what stories to work on for the next two weeks. So, if there is something to tell us that, for example, we should emphasize now, maybe Barak can let us know. Mm. I personally believe we need to finish the Excel importer and uh, the sponsorship linking. These are the high, too high priority, I believe. If you think any other points, please go on. Do the OSRA staff now have access to Pivotal? Uh, Tarek is a member of the team of Pivotal. Okay. So he, um, he can leave comments directly under the stories or...? Uh... I prefer my husband to do it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, as long as you're looking at the stories, knowing what's happening, and letting me know, for example, if you have any comments, no problem. No, I can add the we can all, all blame office and then when things go wrong. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. 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 Thank you, guys. Thanks for the Thank you. Uh, guys, please don't uh, leave a hangout. I want to discuss when we will have a retrospective meeting. Okay. Can I, can I just ask a question about the next meeting as well? Sure. Um, and whether there's a chance of maybe delaying it a half an hour or quarters of an hour? Oh. Uh, it will be on uh, October 13th. Well, I, I'm going to be... It's, it's not a big problem, but I, I think sure. I joined at quarter two, and that's the earliest I can make it for at least the next two or three months. October sixteenth. Uh, October ninth. Sorry. Oh, yes. No. Oh, October ninth. Yeah. Well, it's not about the date, guys. It's about the time. Yeah. Um, can we make it happen? Can we, can we make it start half an hour later? So six thirty a.m. GMT time. Is that fine for you? Yeah, I'm still going to be ten ten so late, but it would just it would just make it that much easier. 
Yes, yeah, it's, it's the same for me too. Uh, well, we, we can discuss it closer to that date, I suppose. Do, do, do you want to change the time? Yes, we want to start half an hour later because it's hard to team members to join that, uh, uh, at, at, at that time. It's fine. It's fine for us. Okay, that's great. Thank great. you very much. Yeah, thank you guys. So it's, it's, uh, it will be uh, at uh, 6.30 GMT, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Is it okay for you, Matasa? Yes. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. So on October 9th. On October 9th, yes. Okay, great. Now now give each other a Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Nikita, Craig, Motosem, when are we going to have retrospective meeting? Tomorrow or another day? I forgot. What our commitment? Uh, when last time we had it on. It's not about time. It's more about date. Yeah, we well, decided uh, to do it every Friday or Monday. Who remember? Uh, I don't know if we had a specific decision. Um, we had. Did we? Yeah, yeah we uh, have done. But I mean, what's more important is what's best. Yes. Uh, going forward, I guess, for everyone. Should I stop the broadcast? You can stop. It doesn't matter now. Okay. Just a little bit of business. I it on Monday, right? I don't remember, guys. Uh, just decide. It, 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 Monday is probably better for me. Friday is difficult for me. Okay, then Monday it is. Monday? Is that okay, okay for you, though, Nick? Um... Well, you know what? I'm I'm very I'm a very short-term thinker here, so mm -hmm. Monday is definitely better for me because I hope to actually have my story finished by then. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's true, and also we have a chance to show a sponsor author ID story, and maybe other stories, so we can uh, finish more stories. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So mon mon Monday sounds good then. Monday, right after the scrum, right? Yep. Okay, great. Any other questions we can we should discuss? Uh, because we today like do not have a scrum because we have client meeting. Should we uh, have? Uh, yeah? I don't know whether this is a problem or not, but I, I noticed someone said six thirty GMT. Mm. Um, now, was the time clock, changing? When the clocks change, that may well uh, make me a pain in the backside again because. Well, I, I'm going to be with you, Craig. Uh, okay. You know, I'm on local time. GMT is just a reference point. So yeah. Okay. Oh, you have summer and winter time. Yes. Yeah, the clocks will go back in. Fixed for client. Like they're always three hours ahead of GMT. Okay. So it's not a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, we, we can scrum really quickly, I guess. If yes, we... let's do it really quickly. Okay. okay. Uh, I can start. I have been. I submitted a PR for the Ostra orphan list, and there was a bug. I was working on this. I got some comments. I fixed some of the addressed some of the, uh, the issues in the comments, and there is a new PR. Uh, not a new PR, but just updated PR. Also waiting for either more code review comments. Or uh, merging. Uh, oh, had a lot of constructive comments that I like. Some and many that I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a quick, quick question? Because I think I worded some. I am learning. I am learning a lot. But yeah, basically this is it. Once and I did on my own on the local repo as well some. Uh, Testing for the upload, which is the next task on my uh, story, <laughs> testing the upload, and then later I need to move to S3 storage. So once this mer is merged, I can also add my uh, next task in a, in a separate PR, maybe, after I replace re my local developer. So that's it for me. 
Okay, Nikita? Uh, I haven't written a lot of code today. Um, I, I did look at uh, Morrison's pull request and uh, left a few comments, hopefully the ones that fall into the constructive category. Um, I got, um, I, I'm, I was feeling stupid later in the day because I got so caught up in the, uh, the pardon the French shitstorm that was happening on, on Slack again. Um, and watching the recordings of yesterday's scrums. Why did uh, you decide to watch this recording? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, Pavel, I don't know either, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's, it's one hour, you know. It just spent one hour. <laughs> I, well, think I, I, the, I think the first one was helpful to watch. I think it was interesting. I think the second one less so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. Sense. What do you mean the second one? There were two? Uh, there yeah. was the Euro Scrum that Yaro linked to. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, the first one was the America Scrum, and it was actually it was interesting to to listen to that discussion between oh. people, you know, having different ideas about project management. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so it, back to business. Mm -hmm. um, I am continuing to work on the sponsorship story like I wrote yesterday. I realize that my implementation of it is, um, is flawed, so I am fixing that flaw, and I think that will be it for this story and for this pull request and then changing of the UI to fit the new client requirements is going to come as a separate story. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'll be working on this uh, up until the retrospective meeting, basically. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Nikita, will you work on the, like, you remember there is two stories. One is the number of requested orphans and uh, full request fulfilled or not? If if I finish if I finish my current story modus, I think that will be those two will be my next two stories. Before the UI changes to the sponsorship. Yeah, I think before the UI because these yeah. stories are more kind of fundamental to the functionality. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Okay, Greg. Um, I had my uh, pull request merged, and I ticked the button on Pivotal Tracker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I was very pleased with myself, and I, I too got pulled into the um, w watching Slack. And, and it's easy to say that you shouldn't, but I don't know. I find I find the whole situation very, very sad. I mean, when when I first joined Slack, um, Yarrow took me into a pair programming session. Uh, he showed huge generosity, and I, I learned a lot with them. Um, and so I've got that fond memory of them. And then you see on Slack um, active goading of people and, and making their lives miserable. And I just, I struggle to to tally the two. Um, so uh, it, it, does, it does frustrate me, I have to say. Yeah, it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing what that's going on there, that's for sure. Yeah, but I think you guys uh, make too much attention to that because, you know, you spend too much time dis discussing about it, thinking about it. Uh, it's not that big, actually. It's just, well, uh, yeah. you say that, Pavel, but, uh, and, uh, and this is where, uh, when it first happened, my philosophy was to just keep quiet and let everything die down because it'll blow over yeah. but there becomes a point at which Sam can't keep pacifying the situation on his own and the community have to either approve or be complicit by letting it all happen or show their disapproval and that that sort of behavior is unacceptable I think so that's just the way I feel about it yeah. I mean, from a very pragmatic perspective, if nothing else, uh, just the flood of messages that starts pouring out of the general channel gets, well, annoying, let's say. Plus, it drowns out any legitimate conversation that might be happening in there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as an author team, we can say that 
we don't want to have this kind of conversations to in general channel and uh, we we can we uh, how to consider behavior of Yarrow is incorrect right that's I don't correct. think it's what? correct I, I, I have to say yeah it's gone too far I you know I'm with Craig on on on, on my um, you know, feelings towards Yarrow. Uh, I, I started out almost the exact same way. We we paired. He introduced me to the website one project, and we we he and I keep talking still um, outside of any um, of the channels on Slack. So, you know, I I I like him as a person in general, but in this situation, I think it's. Uh, it, I would have advised him to walk away a long time ago, um, but regardless, this, the the conversation that they're having now um, between him, Sam, and Thomas, it no longer seems to have anything to do with Agile Ventures business mm -hmm. at all. So it's it, it's simply you know if they can find a different venue if they want to continue to talk then. By all means, but I, I don't see why it needs to continue in in Slack. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, uh, yeah, okay. I'll talk with Yaro. I, I see, I see your point. I think it's yeah. We need to make kind of statement to do it. Yeah, and and, and I think the other issue is you know when I joined Slack, I was bowled over by how pleasant everything was. Now I noticed someone joined uh, General. Mm -hmm. when that was all kicking off. And if it had have been me joining at that point, I would have turned around and uh, and not come back. Mm -hmm. I see. You know, yeah. just, just my personal opinion, because it, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't represent us, any of us well, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll discuss with Yaro. No problem. Okay, guys. Thank you, Ben. And any other questions we want to to discuss? Uh, I'm I'm good. Okay. Well, let's. Oh yeah, I forgot to say my personal opinion. <laughs> I I think it, it's worth to say. Uh, I have good relationship with Yaro, and we have a lot of discussion about projects. Uh, I do not think that uh, what's happened in website one when Thomas decided to uh, get rid of Yarrow this way as he did, I do not think it was a correct way to do and uh, uh, because there wasn't a good discussion and like a good retrospective we had and everyone said that yes Yarrow it's better for you to step out for a while uh, and uh, I think that this decision, as a, as, a, as a consequences of his decision, was uh, that uh, the discussions that Yaro had. But anyway, in these discussions, Yaro goes too far, uh, and uh, it uh, started to affect uh, Agile Ventures as a whole, but not only his relationship with Thomas, and not only Website One project. And in this case, I consider what Yaro did as incorrect situation. Yeah, that is my opinion. Yeah, no, pa Pavel, I agree with you that there is, a, you know, at this point, especially considering how far things went, there is no one person who's guilty in that situation. It's it's a group yeah. thing. Um, so to single out anybody, I mean. In the sense that you know what's happening right now, maybe as yes, Yaro is bending things too far, but as far as the cause, the initial cause of everything, I, I think multiple people behaved incorrectly. Yes. Mm, yes, but but I think where it all started to go very pear shaped was when when Yaro took it to Slack. I mean, Sam and uh, and Thomas aren't. Completely unreasonable, and um, I think if if it had have been adopted through an appropriate medium, then it, it would never have got to this stage. It, 
I mean, if you look back at the conversations in Slack, it was it was relentless. And you, you, uh, your initial, my initial impression is just keep quiet and it'll go away. But it just went on and on, and then you, it would die down for like eighteen hours or twenty four hours, and you'd start to breathe a sigh of relief and think it was all uh, done and dusted, and then it would kick off again. And it wasn't only on Slack; it was on video, as you see, and in many. Yeah, yeah. Scrums, it was. It, it's not only one scrum where we, where we had uh, this argue, you know. So it, it's like it, it's it, it, all mediums that Agile Ventures has, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's such a shame, such a shame. Well, that is something that we should go through as a team. As a gel ventures, I think it's good lessons for us how to behave and what uh, what is the better way. We understand that we didn't uh, didn't have a good approach to this problem. I hope maybe later we will go better and in more mature way, you know, in doing that. Uh, okay, okay, guys, thank you. See you, right. yeah. see you tomorrow on Scrum. Take and care, I guys. hope, Craig, I hope, Craig, that your uh, your feature will be merged into production because Motors <laughs> still did, can't can't you know can show that that was a, that was a really I don't it's, know I, I'm frustrated about now. it. I can't get told off for that, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, guys, thank you, thank you, everyone. I think we did. Right. Great job, you did. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks, Pavel. Uh, Cheers. Bye bye. Yeah. Take care, guys. Bye bye, guys.